Hello. Here are your objectives for section 1.6. Solve polynomial equations by factoring. Solve radical equations. Solve equations with rational exp uh, exponents, excuse me. Solve equations that are quadratic in form. Solve equations involving absolute value and solve problems modeled by equations. So I don't know if you've caught the overlying theme here, but we're going to be solving equations in this section. Okay, all sorts of different random ways with factoring, with radicals, with rational exponents, quadratic in quadratic form, and stuff like that. Okay, so let's get right into it. <clears throat> let's start out. Um, let's solve polynomial equations by factoring. For example, if somebody wants to get rid of that, they can. Or if it doesn't bother you, you can leave it alone. So what do you want to do first? It's definitely an equation I have to solve, right? Greatest common factor. What is the greatest common factor in these two terms? For sure 2, right? What's the biggest x I can take out? x to the 4th, right? What's left if I take out a 2x to the 4th? Yep, perfect. Now, the zero um, multiplicative property says that if I multiply two things together and it equals zero, one of them has to at least one of them has to be zero, right? I don't know which one, so I just think they both are. So this one's hopefully pretty obviously zero, right? If I divide by two, it's still zero. If I take the fourth root, it's still zero, right? Here, x equals negative five. How many solutions was I supposed to get on this problem? What's the greatest exponent? Five, right? How many solutions did I get? I got five. Uh huh. Here's one. Here's two, three, four, five. It's the x to the fourth. That's that's a solution just four times. I don't need to write it four times. I just need to write it once. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Another way that they have you solve these, another way that you're going to have to solve these in your homework looks something like this, and hopefully this looks really familiar to you. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, a little easier to see, because plus we have room. Okay. We did this last week when we were doing factoring, didn't we? There's four terms, so we factor by grouping. We say what's common in the first two terms, x squared. What's left when I factor out an x squared? Mm -hmm. x plus 1. What's common in the second two terms? 5. What's left after I factor out a 5? x plus 1. Exactly. Okay. What's common in these two terms? That one and that one? x plus 1. What's left when I factor out an x plus 1? Plus 5, right? Okay. <clears throat> Again, if they multiply together and equal zero, at least one of them has to be zero. So x equals negative one. X squared plus five equals zero. X squared equals negative five. To solve it, I square root it. X equals perfect plus or minus i root 5. Remember that? Square root of negative 1 is i, so I go ahead and pull that out because I know that, and then I don't know the square root of 5, so I leave it. Any questions? Okay. Uh, the next thing on our objective list was solving radical equations. So an equation with a radical in it, right? So for instance, 2x minus 1 plus 2 equals x. How do I solve an equation like this? Yeah, I got to get rid of the 2 first, right? So the square root of 2x minus 1 is going to equal x minus 2. Again, I got to get rid of the radical. It's a square root, so I square both sides. Keep in mind that I actually square both sides, the whole sides. 
which gives me on the left hand side 2x minus 1 and on the right hand side it gives me x minus 2 times x minus 2 not just x squared plus 4, right? But I have to distribute. Mm-hmm. Very good. People forget that a lot and it makes me sad and I cry inside my heart. Okay. So then let's get rid of these. Let's get it equal to zero because it's a quadratic. I'm not really get, getting rid of them. We're more like combining like terms. Please excuse my lack of correct vocabulary for you. So x squared minus 6x plus 5. And we worked on solving that last week, right? We can factor it. x minus 5, x minus 1. So x minus 5 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 5 and x equals 1. Now an interesting thing about this is that we did talk about extraneous solutions and making sure we're checking our answers every time, right? So if we do that, uh, 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 1. No, it's not, is it? Okay, this is an answer that we got because it worked for the problem. It's not a solution to our original problem. Okay? So if you, f if you actually think about what's happening here, this is a square root function that you know the parent function looks like that, right? That has been horizontally compressed moved to the left one and then shifted up two. So it's somewhere around here, right? And then the line y equals x. If the line is y equals x, guys, how many times are those two things meeting? Only one time, right? Only meeting one time. We should only get one x value if they're only meeting one time. We got two x values because Probably, if we continue this parabola this way, for sure they would meet twice, right? But because of the fact that we're only working with a, a, a square root function here, we created the parabola by squaring both sides, so it's like a pretend part of the problem. It's called an extraneous solution. You remember that? Okay. Any questions about radical functions? Do I need to do any more of those, or are you pretty comfortable with those? Good? Okay, awesome. So... Um, another one of our objectives then, the next objective, is solving equations with rational exponents. Rational exponents would be a problem that looked like this. Three x to the three fourths minus six equals zero. So first I have to isolate the variable with the exponent, right? So I do that by adding six to both sides. So I get 3x to the 3 fourths power equals 6. I still have to isolate the variable, so I divide both sides by 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which gives me x to the 3 fourths power equals 2. How do I get rid of this exponent? It's the third power in the fourth root, right? Only way that I know at this point to get rid of this exponent is to raise it to both sides to the reciprocal of that exponent. Now I'm not multiplying the number, I'm not multiplying 2 by that number, I'm raising it to that power. Does that make sense? Okay, so now here is something that I don't know the answer to and you'll have to figure it out and I would appreciate it if you would tell me when you get there. Okay, x equals 2 to the 4 thirds power is an answer, but x equals the cube root of 2 to the 4th is also an answer. Because remember, I don't know if you remember this or not, but so let me remind you real quick. I said it a minute ago, the top is the power and the bottom is the root of a rational exponent. Do you remember us talking about that? Okay, so do you see how I got to here? But then that means also that this is the same answer because 2 to the 4th is 16. I don't know which one of those your math program will want as an answer. 
I just don't know. Okay? So when you get to a problem like that, just give me a heads up. See what worked. They might all three work. I don't know. Okay? Any questions? Yes. What's up? Yes. It's not in the right form or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can be kind of passive aggressive sometimes. Yeah. Let's do another one of those just to make sure we're, we're comfortable. Okay. Are you guys okay with that? Okay. X to the two thirds power minus three fourths equals negative one half. I know, I know there's fractions in this problem, but you're going to be okay. So let's add three fourths to both sides. When I do that, I get X to the two thirds power equals what? What do you get? So remember, this is like two fourths. So a negative two fourths and a positive three fourths. One fourth. How do I get rid of this exponent? Raise it to the reciprocal power, right? Three over two. 3 over 2. The, the top is the power and the bottom is the root. Guys, what's the square root of 1 fourth? Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. What's 1 half to the third power? One eighth. Now we have to get a little picky here. I said, what's the square root of one fourth? Who put the square root into the problem? We did, right? So what we also have to put in the plus or minus, right? And then when we raise it to the third power, if these are all pluses, it's plus one half, right? But what if they're all minuses? Or excuse me, one eighth. I didn't mean to say one half, one eighth. If they're all minuses, isn't it negative one eighth? So my answer is either plus or minus one eighth. Questions? Number four, solve equations that are in quadratic or that are quadratic in form. Tell me if this equation right here is a quadratic equation. That is definitely not a quadratic equation, right? It's raised to the fourth power, isn't it? But if this was a squared and this was x to the first, couldn't I factor that like if it was a quadratic? Okay, so this is how you need to do this, okay? Mrs. Patton was very excited when she found out that I teach this in college algebra, okay? It's called U substitution. Because it's something that they do in calculus. A U substitution. Guys, I want to pretend, not pretend, I want to substitute X squared to be U. I'm going to do a U substitution where U equals X squared. Okay, if u equals x squared, then this is really u squared, isn't it? Does that make sense? And this is really 8u, and this is really 9, right? Isn't that a quadratic? It is, right? So let's factor it. u minus 9 and u plus 1. Right? So u is going to equal 9 and u is going to equal negative 1. Well, what does u actually equal again? x squared. So now that we know what u is, we need to like unsubstitute it. So this is really x squared equals 9 and x squared equals negative 1. Yeah, now I solve for x, right? Square root both sides, x equals plus or minus 3, and x equals plus or minus i. How many solutions should I have gotten? Four. How many did I get? 
4 plus or minus 3 plus or minus i. That's called a u substitution. I take something that I know, it looks like it's in quadratic form, but it's not. There's a 4 here and a 2 here, or maybe there's an, uh, an 8 here and a 4 here, or something like that, okay? So I use a u substitution. I, d I figure out what I need to substitute here to just be a u, and that to make that a u squared, so that it is in quadratic form, so that I can use factoring and such like that to solve it. Now, is this the only way to do it? No, absolutely not. Okay, but in some of your homework problems, it takes you through step by step with the u substitution, and I wanted you to be familiar with it. Okay? Questions? Um, our next objective that it asks us to look at is solving equations in involving absolute value. Now, we did absolute value in Algebra 2. Um, but it was the first time that you had done absolute value equations because you don't do them in Algebra 1. Um, and so uh, we struggled with them a little bit in Algebra 2 because basically it was the first time you'd ever seen it that way. Okay, so let's go back over it a little slower than we did um, the first time. Not than we did the first time, just slower than maybe some of this other stuff that we've been doing that you guys are fairly good at. Here's the problem. Okay. The first thing we need to do, I'm going to write you some steps over here to the side also, okay? We need to isolate the absolute value. Well, in this particular problem, the absolute value is already isolated, isn't it? Okay? After we isolate the absolute value, we need two parts. We need a positive part and a negative part. Why do we need two parts? What numbers can go inside of this absolute value sign that if I take the absolute value of it, it equals 5? What can I take the absolute value of that gives me an answer of 5? 5 is one of them. Negative 5 is the other one. Absolutely. Okay? Because remember, absolute value is our distance from 0. There's two things that are 5 units from 0. There's a 5 and there's a negative 5, okay? So I need two parts. I need what's inside the absolute value to be positive, and I need what's inside the absolute value to be negative. You remember this? Slightly, a little tiny bit, that's fine. We can work with a little tiny bit, okay? Now I need to solve. Well, I can add 1 to both sides here and get 2x equals 6. When I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 3. I can distribute the negative sign through where I can divide both sides by a negative. Either one will work. Which one would you like to do? Distribute negative 2x plus 1 equals 5. So that if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get negative 2x equals 4. And dividing both sides by negative 2 gives me x equals negative 2. So a lot of times they're going to want, uh, well, for all, always we need to check, right? So if I plug this in, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. Absolute value of 5 is 5. So we're good there. Negative 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Okay, so we're good there. I didn't give myself enough room to write you all the steps. I'm sorry about that. Okay, after we isolate it, after we put it in two parts, after we solve it, after we check it, we need to graph it. Not so important graphing it as it is when it's an inequality, but still the graph is important because I have two values. One is negative 2, one is 3. Okay. <clears throat> Can I give you a really, really, really easy problem? Do you, first of all, do you have any questions about this? Okay.
Why did I say it was a really, 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 really easy problem? When will I ever take the absolute value of any number and get something that's negative? Never. Absolute value is a distance from zero. We don't have negative distances from zero. Done. Now I can start with the problem like this, like maybe my multiplier is a negative two, right? I'm not going to get no solution on that problem, am I? Only after your absolute value is isolated. Once this is isolated, if it equals a negative number, you're done. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions about that? All right, our last objective for the day is to solve problems modeled by equations. What does that mean? Word problems. So it's all these things with word problems. Got it? Word problems are the best. I'm so glad you feel that way. Any more questions?